What's going on everybody? My name is David and if you're new to the channel, be sure to smash that like, subscribe and notification bell because I'm going to show you right now how to fix this dripping shower head that has a handle on it that you cannot get off because the screw is absolutely stripped out and stuck inside. Here I have a new handle so I can kind of demonstrate what happens. It's basically none of these Allen keys fit very well inside of them. Torx heads actually fit a little bit better. So before you go through this next process, try a Torx bit. This is like a T10, but just get yourself a set of them. Try to jam it in there, hammer it in there. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're gonna need to drill it out because you've already stripped it. I'm using a 7 30 seconds drill bit. It's the one right above the 1 8th. And you just go until you can't see any more metal shavings or you feel like you've hit the inner part of the handle. I was drilling for a little while and I thought that I might have had it. So I went ahead and just give it a tug, but you don't want to tug too hard and like rip the whole thing out of the wall. I'm gonna go back and drill just a little bit more here. And you'll see I'm sort of kind of like rounding it a little bit with the drill just to make sure I get all of that screw out of there. And it's, it's starting to wiggle a little bit. I just need to get a little more leverage on it. So I'm gonna get two hands on it and really pry it off. When you start seeing it wiggling and start coming towards you, you know you've got the screw out and you just gotta use brute force at that point. Hooray, give yourself a pat on the back because you got the handle off and the next part of this job is pretty easy. You're just gonna start removing everything and getting the old cartridge out and the new cartridge in. If you don't have the cartridge or you don't know which one you want, you can look them up online or you can take them to the hardware store to figure out which one it is. The manufacturer of this one was Kohler, but all manufacturers of these things have a very similar process. You can go to their website, you could call their customer service, you can email them pictures, and they will even sometimes send you the parts for free. Now, once the exterior trim of the fixture is off, inside of some fixtures, like mine, you'll have integral shutoff valves, which you can turn off the water to service the inner workings of the cartridge. But if you don't have these, you'll need to shut off the whole house and drain the water down. I'll do a video on how to locate your main water shutoff and how to drain down your house at some point in the future. Let me know in the comments comments if you need that right away and I'll get on it. If you do have integral shutoff valves, make sure you use a big flathead to get them started because you don't want to strip these out either. It can be quite challenging to replace and annoying to find the part as well. You'd have to switch over to a smaller flathead screwdriver to get the valve to go in all the way, but that's totally fine because the majority of the force was spent on getting the screw started to turn. Now you want to spin the valve with your hand to make sure that there's no water coming out of it before you start removing the cartridge. Depending on the manufacturer, you may have some screws that secure the cartridge or there may be a ring. If you have that, it's likely a delta, and I've done some videos on that as well. Those kind, you can get like a pair of pliers or channel locks, and you can get it started like that and then screw it off by hand. But on this one, I'm using my electric screwdriver, which I absolutely love these things. If you don't have one yet, be sure to check the link down below. I'll have all the tools and parts that's needed to fix this thing listed below. After the screws or the ring that is securing the cartridge are out of the way, there'll be a little bit of water. I like to tuck my hand under here to try to guide that water out from behind the wall. It's okay if a little bit gets back there, but you don't want all this to gush back there and then get moldy behind the wall. And this particular style from Kohler is actually a two-piece system. Always make sure that when you remove it, you take the gas gets out sometimes they get stuck on the valve body just inspect the inner housing if it's full of rust and stuff you may need to clean it up this one was pretty good now here's the two parts you have the pressure balance assembly and the temperature adjustment knob i don't know why this thing comes with so many different gaskets you actually only need these two little ones and I put a little bit of this heat proof grease on all of my connections before I put them in. I think it just gives it a little bit more longevity to the repair. I've had this container of heat proof grease for a long time. Just buy one, it'll last for a while and you'll be able to use it on all of your future plumbing repairs, any gaskets and stuff. You just lube them up with a little bit of this stuff and it just helps your repair have a much higher chance of success. There are the seats in the back of the valve there. You can feel them, make sure they're not scratched and they're gonna cut the gasket because sometimes that can cause the valve to just start leaking again even after you complete this repair the inner part of the valve doesn't matter which way it goes as long as you have the holes horizontally but this next part it does matter because if you flip it the wrong way then the hot will be on the right and cold will be on the left and you'll be turning the thing on backwards and it won't ever work right. Now I've been told that if your problem is a temperature control issue that you only need to replace the outer portion and if your problem is a drip, you only need to replace the inner portion but the parts are not that expensive and if you're gonna be in there anyways, I think it makes sense to just replace them both. So at this point, you wanna put your screws back in. This one has big screws on the sides and small screws on the top and you wanna get these pretty tight because if you don't they're going to have a leak and you'll be dripping again with those in place we're also going to adjust the anti-skull device on this it's a little set screw that will limit the amount that the valve can turn 
and sort of restrict the hot water flow. I want this thing basically backed all the way out so I can get the water as hot as possible. And don't forget to turn your water back on if you have integral stops or you could turn the house water supply back on at this point and check for leaks. I can't tell you how many times that I've put the whole thing back together and realized that I never turned the water off and then I had to take it back off again. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a little bit frustrating when you think you're done and then you have to go back and turn the valves. Let me know in the comments if you've ever done that before. It'd probably be a good time also if this thing was caulked before, you wanna remove any of the old caulking. You technically don't need a new caulking, especially since we're gonna be replacing the trim kit anyways, and it comes with a gasket. Now here I'm just sort of checking if this is wet from the work that I did or if it's wet from an actual leak. So I wanna dry this up and just leave it for a few minutes and just make sure that we don't have any active drips because something dripping behind the wall is gonna go unnoticed for a very long time. With the water back on, you can also turn your valve on by hand and just test it, make sure hot's on the left, cold's on the right, make sure everything is flowing and working fine and that the valve actually stops the water flow before you put your new trim on. Since we did drill off the handle, we are gonna need a new trim package. I think you could probably just order the handle from somewhere, but I just get the whole trim kit all together. Makes the whole thing look really clean. Comes with like the scutcheon plate on the outside and the inner ring, and it just makes everything sealed really, really nicely. You can see how tight that goes on there. And then there's a couple screws. I think I ended up using the old screws, but it does come with new screws as well that you could replace them with. This is where these electric screwdrivers really shine on these extra long screws you don't want to be like turning your wrist a whole bunch and if you use a drill you have to be very careful that you don't over tighten them so these electric screwdrivers don't have that much torque so you're not going to like cross thread the fitting or just over tighten it and bend the plate at all but you do want these pretty tight so you don't have water leaking behind the wall there's a gasket on the inside of this thing so you don't need to caulk it unless there's like some weird obvious gaping hole or something do you put that on you're going to need to add this little like handle adapter it's a plastic piece and they break all the time and they make the handles loose and you want to point it so that the screw is going to be accessible to hit the shaft and not hit the plastic piece and then you can put your handle on and I'm gonna actually tighten the screw on the handle with the T10 Torx bit and not strip this thing. I'm just gonna go as tight as it needs to go and now you can test everything out. It works perfectly, it feels really smooth. You're not gonna have temperature fluctuations. If you do, there may be some fluctuation happening at another valve in the home and you have to do multiple valves to really diagnose and find the problem. I did have some metal shavings on the floor you do not want to be stepping on metal shavings. You can use a magnet like I'm using here or just wash it off really well and just test it for a while and make sure that it does eventually stop leaking. It, this one was working perfectly when I left. If this helped you out at all, please drop a comment, subscribe, like the channel. I spent a lot of time filming and editing these videos so that hopefully it reaches somebody that can actually use the advice and get some help from it. Again, I'll try to drop some links down below for the Kohler one that I just fixed. I think it's called a Posi Temp. And uh, yeah, it uh, worked out great. So we'll see you guys in the next one.